What is up, Sec Plus Preppers? These are the IT Dojo Security Plus questions of the day. I am Colin Weaver, and each and every day I give you two Security Plus questions for you to ponder and practice. So let's go ahead and get right to it. Question number one coming at you today from the world of wireless LAN security. And in this scenario, you have been tasked with scanning the radio environment for uh, client devices that aren't supposed to be around. Uh, which of the following things is your wireless, scan, wireless LAN scanning tool or your frequency scanning tool going to be looking for in order to detect unauthorized 802.11 clients in your network? Uh, give those a look, click pause if you need to. When you're ready, click play again. And we'll break it all down. First item on the list, serial number. Uh, no, I'm unaware of any circumstance when an 802.11 device will send a serial number of the device out as part of its notification or presence or wireless LAN searching or anything like that. So serial number has absolutely nothing to do with it. Next item on the list is SSID. Now, this one could be a little bit confusing and if you pick this one, I can see why you got it wrong and it's not right. But the reason that it's not right is because the SSID is not specifically what you're looking for. Perfectly plausible for clients to send out probe request frames, not looking for any particular SSI, any SSID or just any SSID. So you're not looking for an SSID in particular. Um, in your own radio environment, the SSID that is being advertised by a particular access point is something that's included in the beacon frame. And if a client is looking for a particular access point, it's included in their probe request frame. Now, the probe request frame can be sent looking for a particular SSID, or it can be sent looking for any SSID or the broadcast SSID. So uh, it is not specifically what we're looking for to try and detect uh, nodes in the network that aren't supposed to be there. We're going to be looking for something else on this list, something that's a better answer than what SSID is. Third option on the list is access point beacon frames. Um, no, access points send beacon frames. If you were looking for rogue access points in your network, then you could look for beacon frames, whether they included the SSID or not. In this case, however, the question says that you're looking for clients that aren't supposed to be in the network and clients don't send beacon frames unless, of course, they're in ad hoc mode. Uh, but again, don't read into the question. Access points send beacon frames. Third option there is the BSSID, the Basic Service Set Identifier. Uh, the Basic Service Set Identifier is the MAC address of the access point. So that's not what you're looking for. So we're on the right track here, just the right value, a MAC address, but not from the right device. The next option, MAC address, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the MAC address that is being put into the source MAC address field of the client, so the radio client who's transmitting a frame on the network. And I don't care if he's transmitting a probe request frame, if he's transmitting a beacon frame because he's in ad hoc mode. I don't care if he's already connected to a wireless LAN and he's just transmitting regular old frames. I'm looking for MAC addresses of clients who aren't supposed to be in my environment. So that's what you're specifically looking for. And then the other option on the list was FQDN, fully qualified domain name. No, the devices don't include their fully qualified domain name in any of the 802.11 uh, management or control frames that are being sent. So uh, that's not something that's gonna help you find uh, rogue devices in your network either. So that's not gonna happen. All right, here comes question number two. Uh, we're sticking with wireless LANs today. Now, when you're in the configuration interface of your, uh, your wireless LAN equipment, it could be your access point or whatever your control unit is uh, for your wireless LANs, you notice that there are options for WPA PS, or WPA2 PSK and WPA PSK. Sometimes showed up as WPA2 or WPA1 or WPA2 personal or WPA1 personal, but there's some sort of a distinction between WPA2 and WPA1 that you're gonna have. Now, why, from the answer choices that are listed here, would you choose WPA2 versus WPA1? Give them a read, click on pause if you need to. When you're ready, click play, we'll break it down. Item number one there says that WPA2 allows you to enforce minimum data rate requirements on your clients. Uh, no, uh, the different radio technologies can allow you to do this and the access points, assuming the functionality is built into them, will allow you to do this. So for an 802.11, uh, G radio, for example, you could go in and specify that a minimum data rate of 12 megabits per second is required, and doing this would cause 802.11B radios to no longer be able to connect. Okay, And so you, you'll find this in different vendors' equipment where you can go in and specify a minimum data rate, but it does not have anything to do with WPA2 uh, or WPA1. 
It's a function of the different radio standards that are out there, 802.11g, 802.11n, 802.11ac, etc. Second item on the list says that WPA2 compliant devices must support AES CCMP. This is absolutely true. Now, if you have a device that is WPA2 compliant, which probably for the past decade they all have been, or close to it, they have to support AES CCMP. It doesn't mean that you don't have an access point that will support WPA2 with backwards compatibility to WPA1. But if your clients and your access point are all WPA2 compliant, that means that they all support AES CCMP, which means that they all implement something called the four-way handshake. Okay, and it's, it's uh, the robust security network is the, the terminology. They either still use it or they used to use it for that. But that is absolutely the answer that you're looking for. Third option on the list says the WPA2 fully implements WEP 128. No. WEP bad. Never use WEP. WPA2 requires the client to present its certificate in the authentication phase. While that is certainly plausible if you were doing WPA2 using EAP TLS, um, or protected EAP, it's not required. And it was also supported back in WPA1 if you were doing the enterprise implementation of WPA1. So not the best answer that we're looking for here. And then the last option on the list reads that uh, WPA2 pre-shared keys or PSKs are longer and stronger than WPA1 PSKs. And that could not be farther from the truth. Uh, in fact, there's no difference in the length of supported characters, 63 characters that you would have in a pre-shared key for either WPA version one or WPA version two. So that's not the right answer either. So again, the best answer here is that you uh, WPA2 devices have to support AES CCMP. Okay, there you have it. Two questions down. Hope you enjoyed them. If you did, please like, 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 like down below. Um, also give a comment if you found those questions to be helpful and if you got them right, I'd be kind of curious to know how you're doing on them. And if you want to get these questions each and every day, make sure you click on the subscribe button and I'll send you a little notification, a little tickle, letting you know when the next one's ready. So with that said, you click subscribe. So thank you and I'll see you tomorrow.